Hi, I'm Marty Nemko. This is an essay I just wrote called The Career Counselor's Take on Today's Work World. I hold some liberal views. I'm pro-choice, pro-gay marriage, pro-moderate government regulation, I'm not materialistic, and I favor more gun control. Yet, in my work as a career counselor, I have developed some right-of-center views, and I thought I would share them with you. Today's ostensibly low unemployment rate belies the reality. There are too few good jobs, reasonable pay, stability, ethics, and growth opportunities. I feel sorry for today's young people, especially because as students, they may as likely acquire activist values than marketable skills, such as critical thinking, effective speaking and writing, quantitative and technological competence. The problem seems worst for white males. The faces we see on our screens reflect my career counseling client's experience an overrepresentation of females and blacks. My female, black, and Latino clients of equal competence are landing good jobs more easily. I have too many quite competent white male clients who are dispirited and or angry. They firmly believe that they've been routinely passed over for jobs and promotions in favor of candidates of today's in demographics. On the job, a number of clients have said that their workplace's focus seems more on diversity, equity, inclusion, DEI, than on producing better products and services. And dare an employee question the DEI orthodoxy, that white males are privileged oppressors who need to give up power, money, and effort to further other demographic groups, they risk the three C's, censure, censor, and cancel. Relatedly, Clients tell me of increased self-segregation by race or ethnicity in the workplace. For example, a few have said that people of a particular background have, quote, taken over the break room. One said, now, unless you're a member of that ethnic group, most employees feel more comfortable eating at their desks or going out. That suggests that HR's pitches aren't working well. All in, we not me, together, and there's no I in team. And employee conversation is more cautious. On one level, that's good. Sexual jokes probably should be reduced or eliminated. Some of my clients feel that in today's workplace, they must limit talk to business and clearly innocuous small talk, lest they risk committing an inadvertent microaggression, for which there is often a price to pay. It's unclear to me whether, from a business sense, that's a liability, but it would seem to make the workplace a less pleasant place to be than in the past. Most significant accomplishment has been made by people whose work-life balance tipped well toward work. I'm speaking here not just about groundbreaking accomplishments such as Google search, the iPhone, or birth control, control pill, all of which were created by white and Asian males, by the way. But even, for example, the accounts payable clerk, who works long hours to ensure that everyone gets paid on time. Yet HR types and self-help gurus tend to urge people to work less. If there were a mantra encapsulating that, it's, we're not human doings, we're human beings. But at least among my clients, friends, and me, people are more likely to feel good about their lives if they prioritize productivity and responsibility. A number of my clients have seen bold individual decision-making, often replaced by collaborative or even consensus decision-making. Not only does that slow progress, but tends to result in tepid solutions, that which everyone on the team can live with and that no one feels particularly invested in implementing. Society's mind molders, the schools, colleges, media, and churches, are increasingly anti-business, anti-capitalist. If I see a media portrayal of a business that's larger than a used bookstore, it's usually some unethical monstrosity run by, you guessed it, white men. But in real life, business brings us everything we use, from the chairs we're now sitting in, the screen we're now reading, the rooms we live in, the vehicles that enable us to move, the medicines that keep us alive. We are seeing a media-encouraged, reinvigorated unionization movement. We seem to forget that unionized industries have not fared well. U.S. steel and car companies have lost huge market share and jobs to Asian companies. And the union-controlled education system has largely failed to live up to our hopes. I shop at two supermarkets, the unionized Safeway and the not unionized Trader Joe's. Of course, other factors are also operative, but the Safeway workers seem much less happy and motivated, and that makes sense to me. Unionized workers get the same pay no matter how much they do or how well they do it. 
Also, workers having a union to complain to and sue the employer exacerbates the already polarized relationship between employers and employees. And now, workers at the Trader Joe's where I shop are trying to unionize. I worry. Anyway, those are my observations. It remains to be seen whether the modern workplace turns out to be a net good for employees, for employers, for customers, and for the larger society. Privately, I'm worried. In any event, that essay is called A Career Counselor's Take on Today's Work World. In any event, I welcome your thumbs up and accept your thumbs down. I always look forward to your comments and especially like it if you hit the share button below. Share on your social media so that my efforts can have broader impact. And I am flattered if you choose to subscribe to my channel. In any event, I do thank you for watching. I am Marty Nemko.